two brothers um had my basic education in ghana so primary school um secondary school primary school junior high school secondary school and i went to um presbyterian boys secondary school yeah. which is um, in Lagon. so um it was around that time when i was meant to you know get into uni i selected um tech um, Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology. That was like my first option because I was always good with the arts. Even in secondary school, I, I did visual arts and that included textiles, sculpture, and um, I think graphic design or something like that. And then, um, yeah, the grades, after after completing senior secondary school, the grades came back, well, you know, my, my, my creative grades were very strong, but my academic grades, which was the math, the science, you know, it was a bit iffy, it was a bit flaky. So, um, you know, my dad was like, okay, you know what, just do some re uh, remedials. So I've done the remedials, um, did it, retook all the, like, the academic subjects, and it came back again, and I failed. And I've done it again. My dad was like, just do it again. I failed it. So... You know, my parents were like, you know, we know you're good, but you need to pass this to get in there. So you just need to try. And for me, I felt like I was always trying, but I felt like, I felt like I was good at that. I wasn't, I, I felt like that's not what I was good at, but they had to see, my parents always had seen the best in me. They have, they have supported me from the very beginning, you know, so I think it's also the thing about the schools in Ghana and the system, the the, the, the the educational system in Ghana, like, you know, what, it's like, some of the classrooms is like, you, you've got, um, how can you put a, a, a monkey uh, or a fish in the same class as a monkey mm -hmm. and tell them to climb a tree, do you know what I'm saying? So, the way they classed that, I remember they, well, wow, they, they had sections for us. You know, if you're if you're very smart, they put you in a section. So they had already put us in, like in 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 in, in sections. Do you know what I mean? So in my mind, I wasn't good for anything because I wasn't doing well in class. Anytime the grades came, I was thirty fifth. You know, and my man was first or second or third, and you know, but anytime it came to the arts, I was known for it. Do you know what I'm saying? But in Ghana. You know, they were really looking at that, do you know what I'm saying? So, at that point when I was meant to go to uni, you know, back to that. And, you know, my I, my dad actually booked a hotel for me in Kumasi. And that was my first time going to Kumasi. And, you know, he was like, yo, just go out there and just try and talk to them. And see, you know, if they can try and get you in there for, for what you want to do. So, I went to Kumasi uh, with my cousin. Took a bus, wherever booked a hotel, next day went to tech. And I remember, I don't know, I can't remember his name, but it was one of the lecturers and he was like, look, there's no chance of you coming here, man, with these grades, you might have to redo a retake again. And I was like, yeah, I've done two retakes already and these are the results. And he was like, you you have to go back and do it again. Went back to my, my mom and my dad that, and they were, you could tell they were still trying to keep their hopes up, but it's like, what do we do now? You know, like every 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 parent wants the best for their child. Do you know what I'm saying? So they they always try to look out for options. But my mom, and my dad never said, ah, oh, you know, stop doing the art and go do something else, and then later maybe you can use the art for something. It was like, if this is what you want to do, we'll find a way. And God being so good. He, he, he made a way for me to come to the UK. So, you know, um, in 2009, I stayed at home for two years. So I finished um, secondary school, which is Presec, in 2006. 
Take a Remedial 2007, 2008, about three years, 2009. And you know, when your mates are ahead of you and you're going to uni and they're doing well, you have people chatting shit about you. They said, Ah, Kobe still at home on Yeshi, you know, he's like, he's wasting his time. Yeah. He wants to do art, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. And one of my paintings talk, talks about this whole story that I'm telling you. And you know, and God being so good, I came here and did my foundation and you know um done done my degree and you know done my masters you know and through it all my mum and my dad paid for my tuition fee i didn't get no help from no Ghanaian government from no british government i didn't get no student loan they paid from foundation up onto my masters and also you have to keep in mind that i had to renew my visa every year so you can imagine the cost i was going through like my mum and my dad were, 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 were the money they were pumping in. Do you know what I'm saying? So, you know, application form for like to renew your stay is like a thousand two hundred and something. Um, paying tuition fee was ten grand plus accommodation plus tickets. So you can imagine what they were doing. So it's like, yo, Kobe, you have to do something with this. And every time after every term, I have to send up back my grades to my dad. Do you know what I'm saying? And I was smashing it. I had to smash it. Do you know what I'm saying? And because, but they were investing too much yeah, in me. So much. Do you know what I'm saying? So it was no point of failure. I couldn't fail. You know? So, you know, after my, my dad forced me to do my master's, like, I always, it is weird because, like, after my degree, I was going to go back to Ghana. He was like, oh, but what about Ghana? What are you coming to do here? They don't appreciate you, bro. So, like, do your master's. So it was like, Okay, do your masters and let's see what happens because the masters is one year. So within that one year, I started to invest in, the, in my art. I started pushing it up on Instagram, just tagging ran random people. So you know the likes of Red Free Two, um, Kano, Chipmunk, all these lot. And I was just being consistent. And God being so good, um, Red Free Two, one day commented on my work, and he was like, "Yo, I like what you're doing. Just keep going." And then two twos now, he just followed me on Instagram and obviously I was gassed in it and then before I realised he followed me on Twitter I was like okay my man is watching now so but I foot on the pedal switched the gear to to um, um, four gear to five and then just going ham 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 and then you know before I, I, I knew um, I don't know if you know of this guy called Dwayne Jones he um, owns um, like a uh, film com like it's like a film company they deal with um, cinematography called Renown Films yeah. and he they, he worked very closely with Rich so they hit me up via email and they're saying um, we like what you're doing there's an exhibition coming up with Adidas and we like to we like you to get involved you know so right from there these were the first two people that gave me the opportunity so I'll do anything for them do you know what I'm saying and I, I still have like good um, um, relations with them do you know what I'm saying so. God being so good, you know, you're doing something with Adidas, like, you know, that, that was just crazy, having my first exhibition, and then through that, I built relationships with them, and then we, I started working with them more and more and more, and to this day, I still have good relationships with them, do you know what I'm saying, and and at that time, I was about to finish uni, and I, I remember sending my, I, I did something for Disturbed in London, uh, which is where we are right now, and I just sent it I just sent to him and I was in uni because I always wanted to do something with Tiny. I always thought he's inspirational. I always thought like, even when I was in Ghana on MTV Base Africa, I used to see him on TV and shit. You'd be like, rah, like, I want to work with this guy. I want to do something with this guy. Do you know what I'm saying? But I never always thought how art and music could work. I just thought, I want to meet him. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, when I was, whilst I was in uni, I just, you know the logo, where is it? Um, the skull. The, the skull. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, I looked at it and, you know, I, I, I did my own take on it. I flipped it and then I, I went to, I remember going to Ikea, I bought the frames, went to Staples, printed it out. Just took my, I took it out on my own initiative just to be proactive. Framed it up and then went on Google, looked for the, the address and I just sent it. So I remember the next day in the morning, bruv, my Instagram was blowing up. Tiny had put it up, Whiskey had put it up, like, all the artists signed under the label have put it up on their Instagram saying, yo, this is sick. Very, very rare. XYZ, Dumi, the main guy, 
put it up on the Instagram. I was like, yo, Kobe, thank you very much. And I was like, my, my likes was going up, my followers was going up. I was getting excited, but I was like, yo, I want something more out of this. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know what we could do, but I just wanted something more out of this because at that time I wasn't intellectually there. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how I could use my art past Instagram. I didn't know how to construct or curate exhibitions. I didn't know that you could, I knew you could put art on t-shirts, but I didn't know like the technicality behind it. Do you know what I'm saying? I wasn't like that open. I just knew Instagram, do art, put it on Instagram, get likes. That's all I knew, you know? So um, I knew some people in the industry and God being so good, um, I got I got Dumi's contact, sent him an email. I was like, yo, I was the one that did the work for you. And then you put on Instagram. I even screenshot it, sent it to him as an attachment. And he was like, yo, like, yo, come down. And this man is never in the country. This man is like, he's never in the country. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's a busy man. So for him to actually make time for me and say, come down, bro, that was a blessing. You know, so I came down and I remember we were here. We were here, standing right here, and we took photos and it was like, yo, like, I like your I like I like what you're doing. I like that you are proactive and I want us I want us to help each other. And he was like, yo, I let's do something. And you know, by God's grace, I've been here for two and a half years, almost three years, and the rest is history. But even way before that, when I sent the piece that I'd done over here, um, I sent an email to Krebs. That's crept and Cronin. Yeah. And I attached it to some of my old work, some of my works that I've done. And he was like, yo, were you the one that did the piece for Disturbing London? I was like, yeah. He was like, yo, we've been looking for you. I was like, oh shit, then one one. And then he was like, oh, we're about to release, put out our album. And you Which know, album was that? Um, it's a long way home. home. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, um, if you want, you can pitch for it. I was like, yeah, I'd like to pitch for it. And he was like, okay, we'll. And at that time, they had just got signed to um, Virgin Media which is a record label. So he forwarded my portfolio to Virgin and they came back to me with an email saying, um, you've actually got a day to pitch for the album cover. So let us know if you can do it. And I was like, a day? A day. <laughs> because that was the last week for the pitch. So you had already, you already had designer, nine designers pitching. So I was the last designer, which was like the 10th. Do you know what I'm saying? It was 10 in total. I was like, fuck this. I put all my uni, remember I was doing my yeah. masters, put all my uni work aside. Banged it out. I done two designs, and then I sent it off. So they came back to me saying, um, "We'll get back to you in the next three days, four days." But well, I didn't even think they were gonna get back. To I didn't even think I'll get it because I didn't know how the industry worked. I didn't know, you know what I mean? Like, and then two twos now they came back to me saying, "Congratulations, we have chosen your design to be the album." I was like, "For fuck's sake, you gotta be joking!" And you know, my God. By God's grace, it, 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 it's the album cover now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I got commissioned to design the whole album package. And that was, that's like my one of my biggest, proudest moments ever. You know, and, you know, from there, and at that time I'd already established, sort of established myself here in the Sturban London. So it was like the stars were just They're lying for you. Lying out for me. What was it like when you? Like saw the album come out printed and like feeling like bro when you're putting this when you're putting this video together I'll send you the photos in it yeah. <laughs> I remember when the the album the 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 when they started putting out copies yeah I remember running to H and V it's like it was my album yeah. or I supported my brother's album yeah. and I was just buying, buying copies, copies just buying copies and just giving it out to people like, yo this is my shit like I've done the shit yeah. I've done the artwork I've done the uh, the 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 booklet for the I done everything like this is this is my work, you know what I'm saying? If when I came here, I bought copies. I put, I put bail on the table. Everything. I remember running to um, Shoreditch. There was a massive billboard, bro. I run. I just people my because my friends were telling me, yo, your work is on that. Your work's on your work's on billboards and stuff. Like you need to see. I was like, where, where? He was like, yo, go Shoreditch. I run Shoreditch. I saw the work. Ah, I, I I was teary eyed. And I crossed the road because the, the billboard was right across the road from me. Crossed the road and I was just staring at it. People were just walking past me, looking at me like, what, what, what is you? I was just staring at it, staring at it. And then I, I remember calling a random. I was like, yo, I put my bag down. I was like, yo, can I get a phone? Gave him my phone. I didn't even care was it was going to run my phone or not. Stood right next to the billboard. Took the picture. Bro. <laughs> <laughs>